Hey guys, I was gonna read you a story. It's called Night Tree by Eve Bunting. It is such a good story. Look at that family. Let's see what happens. Night Tree by Eve Bunting, illustrated by Ted Rand. It's nighttime, I see the full moon. Looks like they're loading up in the back of a pickup truck. They're loading things up, oh, like a blanket. I wonder what they're gonna do. On the night before Christmas, we always go find our tree. We bundle up so we're warm. Nina is already wearing her boots that are too big for her. She's been wearing them all day. Dad sets our box in the back of the truck with the rest of his stuff and the four of us squish into the front seat. We drive through the bright Christmas streets to where the dark and quiet begin. Nina is almost asleep in mom's lap when we stop. Are we there? I ask and dad says yes. And he rolls down the windows so we can smell the tree smell. We scramble out. We are... Uh, there are oaks growing here in alder and maples that are bare now and white in the moonshine. The pines and the spruces and the firs are green. They're talking about different names of trees. Did you know trees have different names? This is called Luke's Forest, but Dad says it's not really a forest, just a nice forgotten place where our town ends. Dad goes first on the path between the trees, carrying our box and the big red lantern. Mom and Nina go next, holding hands, and I come last with the blanket. See their shadows? Oh, looky there. What do they see? It hasn't snowed yet. It's so cold my breath hurts. The sky is spattered with stars, and the moon, big as a basketball, slides in and out between the treetops. Dad's lantern sweeps ahead. Look, he whispers, and we stop. A deer is watching us. I see the brightness of its eyes. Then it turns, and it's gone. They're calling that a lantern. What, what do we call it in Alabama? A flashlight. Here's our tree, Dad says. It has been our tree forever and ever, and we walk around it, touching it. It's grown since last year, I say, and Mom puts her hand on my shoulder. So have you. So have I, Nina says. Nina hates to be left out. So it's like they have a favorite tree in the forest that they go visit. I love that idea. An owl hoots deep in the darkness. There are secrets all around us. Look, there's their tree. Can I put on the popcorn chain? Asks Nina. She hops up and down and right out of one of her boots. And mom helps her get it back on. Nina takes one end of the chain and I take the other. And we wind it around our tree. We've brought apples and tangerines with strings on them, and we hang them from the branches. It's hard to hang string loops when you have gloves on, but it's too cold to take our gloves off. Look what that family, they have, they have made ornaments and decorations for the tree out of food. Look, apples and popcorn. Hmm, I wonder what that's for. For weeks, we've been making balls of sunflower seeds and pressed millet and honey. We hang those too. We scatter shelled nuts and breadcrumbs and pieces of apple underneath. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Woo, scat cat. We scatter them underneath for the little creatures who can't climb very well. And our tree looks very pretty. Look. It's for the creatures. What creatures are they talking about? Mom says I should spread the blanket so we can sit and admire our tree. She's brought a thermos of hot chocolate. I take off my gloves and toast my hands around my warm cup. Dad turns off the lantern flashlight and we stay quiet, hoping some of the little animals will come while we're here, hoping the deer will come back, but it doesn't. 
It's shy, Dad says. I'm shy too, Nina tells him. They're waiting for the woodland creatures, aren't they? Before we leave, she and I get to choose a Christmas carol to sing, and I choose, Oh, Come All Ye Faithful, and Nina chooses, Oh, MacDonald Had a Farm. That's not a Christmas song, silly, I tell her, but Mom says it's fine, and it's a nice song, too. So we sing fast because there's a lot of verses, and it is getting colder. After the last EIO, we gather up our things and head for the truck. And I look back once. Our tree has folded itself into the darkness, but I think I can still see it. Stars caught up in its branches and the moon swinging lopsided on the top. Nina gets tired and Dad has to wrap her in the blanket to carry her, and I carry her boots. Look at him looking back at the tree. They're going back to the pickup truck, aren't they? Later in bed, I think about our tree, and sometimes the next day when the aunts and uncles and family and cousins are all at our house and it's noisy and happy, I let my mind go back to Luke's forest. I think of the birds having Christmas dinner and the squirrels and the possums and the raccoons and the skunks. All the critters. Hey, notice his bedspread. Look at the quilt on his bed. What's on his quilt? It looks like their tree. And look at all the creatures. I just love that. Oh, look at this illustration. Isn't that beautiful? There might even be a bear, because Dad says bears don't really sleep all winter, and if one's going to wake up, it might as well wake up for Christmas. Maybe a fox has come, stepping high on its thin, sharp paws, and they're all there together, singing their own Christmas songs on Christmas Day, around our tree. The end. Isn't that a great book? Night Tree by Eve Bunting. You know, you could fix something for the critters. Maybe you, if you don't have time or your family doesn't have time to go out and, and find a tree in the forest, maybe you could just use a tree on the edge of your yard or even a, a little bush or maybe the deck railing. And you could just sprinkle some breadcrumbs or some cracker crumbs or um, pieces of apple or something like that. And maybe some birds would come. I love that book. Do you think even the animals celebrate Christmas? I like to think so.